Live for USCFSales.com, this is Steve Lopez with another Chess Base 11 tip for you. You'll recall in the last video we began looking at how to do position fragment searches in Chess Base 11, looking for partial positions. Today I'm going to look at something a little more complicated. It is a position search, and it is something I mentioned in my last video. We were talking about isolated D-pawns, and when you're looking at a chess book, you may they may describe isolated D pawns, why they're important, and give you one or two positions or one or two examples. Uh, you might even get a whole chapter if you're lucky. But even if you get a whole chapter, sometimes that's not enough information. This is one of those positional motifs that really practice makes perfect. Seeing a lot of it really helps you understand it better in your own games. And this is where chess base is incredibly helpful. It's a library of chess games where you can go in and find games based on a almost infinite number of criteria. What we're going to look for right now is isolated D-pawn positions, how to find those in Chess Base 11 by doing a partial position search. So what we'll do is we'll right click on the database that we want to search, we'll select search, go to the position tab, all of which we did in our previous video, and we'll put a pawn, a white pawn, on D4. But how do we isolate it? If we do a search right now, it'll just be games in which a white pawn is on d4, and there may be white pawns on either side of it or on the same file. So how do we isolate this pawn? Well, I'll show you how we do it. Over here, there are some radio buttons. You'll notice one says exclude board. Anything you put on the exclude board after clicking that radio button is something that cannot be in the position when chess base pulls up these games. So to isolate the d-pawn, we click on exclude board. We'll click on white pawns. And we'll make sure that the C and E files have no white pawns on them. Notice that we don't have to do this row or this row, of course, because no pawns ever start on the first row. And if they make it to the last rank, they promote. So don't worry with that. Also, we want to make sure that we're not going to be dealing with double pawns. We just want a solo D4 pawn. So we'll put a pawn on every square on the D file except D4. So on the look for board, we have a white pawn on d4. On the exclude board, we make sure there can be no white pawns on any of these squares. We click OK, and we start pulling up games. Notice that in every game I click on, there's an isolated pawn on d4. And just as a side note, not real crucial to the search, but I found this game a little bit earlier today. I want to show you what happens here. This is really cool. There's an isolated d pawn on the fifth move for white because there is just this apocalyptic exchange of pawns in the center of the board to where there are no white pawns except on d4. So by move 5, white has an isolated d-pawn. It's pretty cool. But as we go up and down a list of games, we just click on every position we click on. It jumps us right to that position. Look at the board. You'll see it's an isolated d-pawn every time. Of course, occasionally you get a position like this where there is a black piece on the square in front of the d4 pawn. Now you recall that past pawns must be kept under lock and key as Nimzovich said. Now an isolated d pawn is not necessarily a past pawn as in this position, but it does remind us that one of the tenets of uh, for the opposing player is that if uh, your opponent has an isolated pawn, blockade it, then destroy it. So how do we blockade that pawn? How do we find positions in which there is a black piece in, of, of any kind in front of the isolated d4 pawn. Well, we'll show you how to do that too. This is pretty cool. Right click, select search. Notice I don't want to hit reset to begin with this time because I don't want to lose any of my previous criteria. All of this still applies. I just need to modify it a little bit. First of all, I want to make sure there's a black piece on d5, which means not a black pawn. So I can click exclude board, click on a black pawn, and put it on d5. Notice now we have a white pawn and a black pawn on d5. So the positions that we find cannot have a pawn of either color on that square. Then we go back to the look for board. And what we have here is a wild card. That's what this, these dots are down here at the bottom of your box of pieces. We take a black wild card and pop it on that square. That means any piece. So if I was to put that there without putting a pawn here, all we would find are isolated d-pawn positions in which black has anything on d5. But because I don't want pawns there, I want pieces there, 
Notice, again, on the exclude board, we made sure there was a black pawn on d5. So what we've set up is a position where white has an isolated d4 pawn, because of all these pawns on the exclude board on the surrounding squares, and black has anything on d5 except a pawn. Click that button, and we get games again. And when we start clicking on games, notice we get a king there. We could have excluded kings, by the way, if we'd wanted to. But we can click on these, uh, any of these games, and we notice that there is a pawn, or a, sorry, a piece directly in front of the white d4 pawn. So the point was very simply to show you how to use the exclude board. Anything you put on the exclude board cannot be in the position that chess base pulls up. So it's a great way to augment the look for board. We need a white pawn on d4, any black piece on d5, which is what we get if we click now. But if we go to exclude board, we put the rest of this in. We've isolated that d4 pawn and made sure that there's no black pawn in front. So by judiciously using the look for board or the exclude board, or and the exclude board in conjunction with each other, you can expand the number of position fragments that you can find in Chess Base 11. A really handy tool, extremely useful for studying middle game motifs because chess books just tend not to give you enough examples. With Chess Base and a large database of games, you can find enough examples to hammer that point home and keep you busy for a long time. Till next time around when we bring you another Chess Base 11 tip for uscfsales.com. I'm Steve Lopez. Thanks for watching.